Thank you. Um, um, I think it's only fitting that a, that, a, that a South African always starts a talk like this with a few apologies. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologize about the cricket. Um, I think we gave you a good chance in the test series. I don't know what happened in the one-day series because I've been on holiday. And uh, I got bored after sitting at Cardiff for a day in the rain, so I lost interest in that one. I'd also like to apologize for Kevin Peterson um, and also for the South African authorities for allowing him out the country. And then I suppose I also have to apologize more uh, latterly for, um, for Oscar, Peters, uh, Oscar Pistorius' outbreak, um, uh, having not won the 200. Anyway, having got the apologies out of the way, I'm not going to apologize about my accent or for the speed at which I talk, because I think you guys all speak a bit funny up north anyway. <laughs> but uh, what I'd, I, I'd also, what I'm, what I'm going to talk about today is the BAA scheme for assessing operating standards. Um, I'm going to battle to drag this out for half an hour, so you might all be going home early, because it's quite simple and to the point, this talk. Anyway, the, 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 for no surprises, the, the, the assessment scheme is based on the quarry regulations of, of 1999. Um, the, the BAA um, approached uh, IM, 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 IM and S Solutions, or Rory Graham of IM and S Solutions, formerly of um, Frosty Yeoman, and uh, we asked him uh, to put together a scheme for us which would be, well, we'll see what it does now. And uh, with the assistance of Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan Benefit of Camborne School of Mining, we put together this, this, the, the assessment scheme. It was for, first launched in, in, in 2007, and uh, we picked three of our better members to go and assess and uh, did the assessment on the three quarries. And to our horror and dismay, there was lots and lots of red lights and they didn't quite make, make the grade. And uh, this was probably was a bit of a dampener for some of the others because they thought, well, if those guys are going to flunk it, goodness knows I'm not going to apply. But nonetheless, we got those three sorted out and we rolled it out to all our members in 2008. Um, to date, um, uh, one, about a third of the BAA members have signed up to the scheme. And um, it is quite a rapid sign up at the moment as well, which I'll talk about a bit later. The, the objective of the scheme is, 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 is to provide uh, members with, with, a, with a comfort um, I've got a and, 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 and I think one of the things, in our membership, we have, we have, uh, we have two types of members, or not, not broadly, but we have, we have a very hands-on membership. Uh, uh, some quarries, or some of our members of very hands-on quarries where the managing director is also the quarry manager, the owner, and the, and the shovel operator, all in one. And, and, and this is, th those guys um, maybe need direction rather than comfort, but we also have a group of members where it's an old family business, and unlike James's business, which has stayed in the family, it's kind of got a bit more removed. But the operator is still the original family owner. And it gives them that comfort to make sure that what's happening at their quarry is actually in line with the, the quarry reg regulations. We also put in some environmental legislation because I think nowadays it's, it's, it's almost impossible to kind of separate the two entirely. And, and so we do also have a, a fair number of, of, of got to have environmental issues inside of our assessment. Um, the, um, uh, yeah. Okay, the, what, what the, one of the things is the scheme is not a basis for demonstrating personal competence. I think when the, the whole competence issue started becoming a big issue, um, well, I suppose it's always been a big issue, but it's, it's been talked about a lot in the last five or so years. And when that, that started coming out, there was, a, there was a big push to get everyone get onto a training, get the, the correct training and skills in place. And, and, and there was a move from our members to, to try and get the personal competence thing addressed and, and there was some of our members believe that by going with a scheme this would, ish, would address the personal competence scheme and it, it doesn't do that. It, it, it assesses the competence of the team running the quarry but it, it isn't a, pers a stamp of personal competence on, on, on each individual in, the, in that quarry. And nor is it, a, a, nor is it a, um, a scheme which is a detailed safety audit. It, it, the scheme normally is, 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 a, is a day visit with a day in the office and it's, 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 it's not a detailed bumper-to-bumper -bumper, uh, audit. It is, as I say, it is, it is a way of, of, of giving the, the, the operator some comfort. Um, it does provide an independent expert view on the safety of the quarry operations and whether that, that quarry is compliant with the, the necessary legislation. Um, but, and I think one of the other things is it's, it's very important that it isn't a replacement of existing systems at that quarry. It's merely an assessment of how they're doing, and, and we would hate to see this as, as a replacement of, 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 a, of a, um, existing uh, management within the operation. 
Okay, why, why do we have the scheme? As I said, we, we, there was this issue about the, the competence, but I think one of the things, our, our members are typically small and medium enterprises who, um, who do, do not have the resources to invest in in-house um, health, uh, in -health consult, in-house health and safety management systems, which, which some of the, the, the major players would have. And as a result of that, they do rely very heavily on external consultants. I don't want to give a, I don't want to give a bashing of consultants, but, but merely that there are a large number of them out there, and a lot of our members have tended to end up with um, health and safety at work practitioners rather than quarry, regulation, uh, quarry regulations practitioners. And, and while they have a, wedi a very good health and safety structure, they're very lacking when it comes to the quarry regulations of 1999, which is in essence what we're after. And uh, for that reason, a lot of our members have valued the scheme quite a lot and have either redirected their health and safety consultant or have got others. And, uh, and that's one of the, as I say, one of the, what, what is being quite good about it. Just how, how big is the issue is, is I mean, I, I, I've headed up the measure of the problem, but maybe it's a measure of the solution nowadays because we are getting there. There are 350 companies. These are, this, this, this is a, a source, uh, the UEPG, and if anyone doesn't know that, that's some French thing for the European Aggregates Association. I didn't even know there was one, but anyway. These, these, were, these were figures that they issued in 2005. Um, there's 350 companies operating 1,280 sites in the UK with a total output of 275 million tonnes in 2005. Gosh, wouldn't that be nice? Um, but anyway, and there's five companies that operate 530 sites. Um, their output being 215 million tonnes, which leaves the BAA's target audience of 345 companies operating 750 sites with, a, with an output of 60 million tons, with an average output of 80,000 tons. And that's very typically what our membership looks like. We've got a large, we pick up a large portion of the 345. I'm not going to tell you how large that is, but because then you'll start guessing. Um, but it's, we, do, we do pick up a large portion of the 345, and very typically all our members are around about the 80,000 ton mark. And as you can imagine, trying to get a health and safety practitioner in there to, uh, uh, with, with that kind of revenue is, is, is just not going to work. And hence the, 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 why our scheme has been well received by our members. Um, okay, what is the assessment? The assessment, um, it, you, it usually takes about a day on site and a day in the office. That would be for your typical 80,000 ton a, 80, ton a year uh, site. Larger sites and multi-sites can take several days. And the cost of this varies. The lowest one we've had is 850 pounds, and the most expensive one we've had is 4,000, which has been a large multi-site uh, operation. And, um, and, and, and we, we believe, okay, the, the, when, when so our members don't, the, the BAA makes no money out of this. It's a service to our members, and it is a, it, it's totally cost neutral to, to the BAA. And uh, we believe that, that, that our, our members get a, a good, good, uh, good value for money on, the, on that thing. Okay, what does the assessment look like? Um, it's, it's, it's about 100, it ends up as about a 150-page document. And it sounds very heavy, but it's, we try and keep it very computer-based. Um, it's a Word document file, which is, which is linked, which if you are computer literate, so uh, Roy, you wouldn't be able to read one of these. Uh, but you, we give, for the non-computer literate, we do issue a paper copy. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> But it is hyperlinked so that the person can move around the document with ease, and it becomes a kind of ongoing assessment for that company. And okay, I've put in fictitious names and addresses. Oops, I've put in fictitious names and addresses. Um, Honeydew Quarry was one that I used to work at in Johannesburg. Uh, spent many years actually. I did a paper on the Institute of Quarrying on it. It was a, it was a, a large sand and gravel deposit which was turned into was going to be one of the deepest quarries in Africa. And um, then we sold the company to Forge, and they turned it into a golf course. Which, uh, which was interesting. It was an interesting country, South Africa. Anyway, that's enough about Honeydew Quarry. So this would typically be the sort of thing, um, the, the date of the appraisal would be the 5th of May, 2011. Um, the, the, the closeout visit would be when, when I would go and, and do a closeout. Um, all I do when I do the closeout is have a look at, to see whether they've produced the documents that they should have produced. And generally, as you can see, I'm going um, uh, in, on the 9th and uh, on the 10th, 11th and 12th, they then start submitting the returns on, on, on things which are still outstanding. And it's sort of very typically eight to nine or 10 months later, uh, the closeout report is reviewed by the panel and, 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 uh, the, the, um, and, and the company gets its uh, assessment certificate. So it is a process which takes about a year. Um, we have got some guys which are a little slower. And I think our record's about three years. 
and they, they get in there, they, they get in there, they, they itch in. They've got about two or three things just to put together at the moment, and, and, and it's done. But it's a small quarry, it's, 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 it's got, four opera, it's got four, a staff of four, and, and when you talk about staff commitment, everyone is totally involved in what's happening there. So when the guys have finished this thing, it's going to be a health and safety scheme, which they're all intimately involved with, know what they're doing, and, they've, and, the, and the BAA scheme has helped them put that together. And it's, it's a very nice experience to see them, them, them bringing, it, bringing it together. Um, to date, we've never had anyone that's fallen off the bus. So nobody has actually embarked upon the scheme and said, whoop, that's it, I'm not continuing. Once we get them on, it's very much the old bulldog approach. We hang in until they finish. And um, I'm pleased to say in the, since 2007, we have not yet had any member that's embarked upon the scheme and has, and, and has then dropped it, which I think is, which is, is, which is good news. The document we have has got a very nice forward in it. Um, uh, this is a little bit about um, uh, uh, BAA's... Uh, Commitment to target zero. Uh, we give a little bit of a plug to the to the uh, Quinjack who have had a look at the document and support it. And um, one of the things we debated quite, le quite at length at the at the at uh, BAA was whether we made it mandatory for members. And uh, we kind of thought that wasn't our style, uh, mainly because maybe the MPA thinks it should be. So we did the opposite. But uh, anyway, we, we we don't make it mandatory. And uh, it, it's, it's for the members to sign up to it willingly and uh, understand what we do it. I think also, when I say a third of our members have signed up to the scheme, it most probably sounds that it's not a good infiltration. I think we will eventually end up with about two-thirds of our members signing up. But there will be a third of our membership which will never sign up to the scheme. And those are the members which tend to be larger and are able to, to have their own in-house resources and who look upon the scheme as an extra cost and perhaps an unnecessary extra cost, certainly in the, in the times. I mean, we launched this in the, the good old peak of 2007, and it's been downhill ever since, really. So a lot of those companies are saying, look, I've got all my systems in place, I've got in-house, and I'm not going to use your system. Our challenge is to get that, is, and, and it's, it's a daily challenge um, uh, for us, but is to, get the, um, is to get the guys, the one-third that are hiding in the bushes, hoping that nobody visits them. And I must give it to, to, to Richard. He's very good at. He's a very good recruiting sergeant for us. He 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 picks on one occasionally and uh, hands them out, uh, gives them the address of the BAA, and we normally get no, a call. No, no, let's get it right. I tell them there are two. two okay. <laughs> All right. Well, he gives. <laughs> Sorry, he. <laughs> Uh, all right, I apologise for that, right, Richard. He also tells them to can go to Coal Pro, but most of the quarries find it's most probably better to go to the BA. But it is quite, it, it, it is a scheme which gets them on the bow, and uh, we have we have uh, we have had a couple of people say, Richard Nobles visited me, and you can help me, and um, and I'm pleased to say we have we have helped a couple of them, and are helping a couple of them at the moment. Um, okay, that's the contents page. As I say, this is all in in the computer model. It's all hyperlinked, so you can. You can click on, 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 on for example, um, PPE, and that'll then take you to the list of questions all about PPE, and it'll highlight which, um, uh, uh, and then what results are. So it's a, it's a fairly comprehensive in doc document. Um, it's broken up into, into 18 sections, and I won't go through them, but from general information right down to environmental issues. And then at the back of the book, we, have, we list the majors, the issues, the observations, and um, and, and any photos that, that the, the, uh, the, the person that's doing the assessment thinks are necessary to put in. And then we put in panel comments and, uh, and, and who participates in it. So as I said, it, it is, and it is, a, it is a very much a living document. And um, let me get into it. So we have, a, we have some general information up front just explaining what the quarry is and what it's about. Um, whether it's got uh, contractors on it or not got contractors. If it's got a ready mix plant or an asphalt plant. And a lot of that information is put down more from a, from a panel point of view, just so that the, the reviewing panel, and I'll discuss the panel now, know what they're looking at. Because as an assessment panel, we don't all rush out to the quarry and have a look at it. This document is the means of which we either approve or reject um, uh, uh, the assessment, and uh, whether we approve or reject the issuing of a certificate. So it actually gives, a, it gives some aerial photographs of the site, what's on the site, um, some pictures of it to show what house, generally what housekeeping, what the layout's like, what the, the, the size of the plant is, is it a small plant or a big plant. Um, you know, this is a picture of a concrete plant, the asphalt plant on site. And it gives, a, it gives a tone to the to the panel as to what it looks like. And it also gives a visual impact to the, the, the operator, who might not necessarily be the manager of the site. It gives him an overview of, of, of what his quarry looks like. So it is quite important from that point of view. 
Another page, about I think this is about page five or six. It gives it gives the this gives spills out what, how the assessment is actually done. So it's a traffic light system where a, there's about I think there's about a hundred questions asked during the assessment, and you either get a green, uh, an amber, or a red. Uh, green means you you you, you comply, so it indicates compliance with 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 the, with the regulations. Um, amber is is always a grey area. It indicates partial compliance. And we always quite don't quite know how far to push the partial compliance one. Um, if a guy's got one risk assessment covering one aspect of the operation, is that good enough? And it's probably not. So he's going to kind of get a red then. But uh, if he's got 10 uh, 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 risk assessments with, with safe systems of work backing those up, then we figure he's on the road and we'll give him an amber. But if he's got none, he's definitely going to get a red. Quite typically, what we would try and replicate, what we say to p people who participate in the scheme, is that a red is the sort of thing you're going to get an improvement notice or, a, or a, a prohibition notice on. If you had an inspector on site, you're going to get an improvement notice, prohibition notice, if you've got a red. An amber might be a little letter or it might be a nice little talking to. And a green is happiness. So that's the, the kind of, uh, the, 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 if you were to translate that into an inspection. Um, Okay, so I've, I've just gone through some typical pages of, of this. This is section four, um, competence and training, good hot potato. So the question here that was asked um, was, uh, are, all, are all training records complete and traceable? And uh, this guy's obviously got none or wasn't able to show the assessor. So he gets a, he gets a red. And the other question is, have all staff uh, been properly trained and have appropriate experience and knowledge and other qualities relevant to their role? And he's got a fat red for this one. So this is his major three. So the th um, typically, it's always out. The best we've had is, 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 one, uh, is an assessment where someone got uh, one major and uh, otherwise a clean bill of health. That's not typical. The worst we've had is of the 50 questions, uh, 54 reds, and you just had to go in the front door to know that this guy was a 54 red man. We were surprised he got six greens. Um, <laughs> it was one of yours, you know. You must stop sending those, those dogs. Um, <laughs> but he's good. He's, <laughs> hey, he's down to about 20 reds at the moment. Anyway, that's, uh, so, so once we've... Once we've so what I'll do is, I'll, from there, you can, you can see it's a hyperlink, so the, the operator or the owner or whoever it is who's managing the thing can then pop on and have a look, and there's major three. And what the assessor will do, will give quite a lot of, read, will give a lot of advice on, 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 on what he should be doing. So he'll, he'll have a look at what they've done and spill out what's necessary, where, where, what part of the regulations they're doing. So we try and give as much information as possible to the 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 uh, to the, uh, the 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 quarry manager or the operator about what he should be doing, and um, and then part one is 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 then for the for the operator to write back and say okay uh, management carries out regular cool box talks which he wasn't doing uh, will ensure that such talks um, are signed off in the future because quite often they say they're doing them but they never do. And the quarry foreman has an EPIC risk assessment certificate and toolbox on risk assessment will be carried out shortly and attendance signals will be attained. So he's kind of said that's what he's going to do on that date. And then when we go and do the closeout, the company has now developed a training schedule and good records of training, including toolbox talks, are now being recorded. And that's two months after the fact. And at the panel meeting, we then have a look at what was said, what has been done, and I will then pr produce documentary evidence to the panel to say this guy's actually doing it, and the panel will then accept it. Once we've accepted all the reds, we then issue a certificate. So, and that's also been a bit of a debate within the scheme, is do we, do we, want, do we want greens throughout the whole document? And we feel... One, it's quite onerous on an operator to get there, and he must probably would take more, a lot of time to get there. But the reds are things, in other words, if, a, if an inspector went onto the site and all the reds had been addressed, there might be issues which need further attention, but would never, we, we think are highly unlikely to re result in, a, in an improvement notice or, a, um, or a, an enforcement notice on them. So, so once we've got all the reds ticked, we then issue a certificate to the operator. However, just having a look at, this is, um, this is a, the section on PPE, and um, yeah, so have, have you assessed what personal uh, PPE is required, and um, how they integrate together. So this is, this, is a, this is an issue number eight. Once again, if you, if you then click on issue number eight, there's a whole rundown on, 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 um, 
on, on what, what the, the, the state of play is with PPE. And then the, the operator has had a look at three different aspects and has answered three parts of it. And we don't accept or not accept that. That's for the operator to say whether he's got there or not. Um, what we would do is the certificate we issue is valid for three years. And at the end, in the next three-year period, the, the, the yellows or the ambers are the ones that we were going to be focusing on quite strongly. And this has been a huge change of the quarry, which then will result in a complete reaudit. But the ambers are the ones that, how far, you said you were busy on the rail, how far have you got? And if they're still an amber, it was probably will result in a red and not getting the certificate renewed. But so, so that's, so this, the, this is a, so the issues are very much, as I say, for the, for the operator to, 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 to get the, the, the ongoing improvement within the operation. And just as a final sort of run-up here, we've got a, we've got a um, this is an observation. Are traffic routes um, and work areas organized, suitably marked and communicated for both the public and the workforce? So this guy's got a, he's got a green light on this one, and, but it's an observation because on the day that, that the, 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 uh, the, the um, assessor was there, uh, they were doing some gabion basket sales and it, was not, it wasn't a normal sale, so they had this sort of gabion basket load up place on the other side of the entrance, so they were actually driving the loading shovel through the no entry side to load it up. And it's all those kind of things that always happen when the assessor's there, doesn't it? It doesn't happen when he's not there. Anyway, but it, they've got a, they, the, the assessor actually says you've got a great entrance, you've got a great system, but you know, you're actually messing it up for this one job. And, uh, and, and the, 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 in this case, the operator is actually now acknowledges um, that uh, you know, in future contracts of this nature will have a designated area to do it in. So it's, it's something that gets sorted out there and there on the site. Okay, as I say, somewhere between um, uh, one year and, 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 uh, and, and three years, we, we finally get to the end where we issue a certificate. I thought I'd put Bob Derwood's certificate there because he was most probably, he's the, the chairman of the BAA, he was most probably one of our more difficult characters to get on the scheme. But uh, we've now got Bob up and done and he's very happy with it. And, um, and, and, and that's his certificate which was awarded at our, at our AGM earlier this year, in June this year. So, um, and, that, and that certificate, as I say, lasts for a period of, of, of um, uh, lasts for a period of three years, after which we go and re we do an, a reassessment of the operation. Um, we, we, we make a bit of a fuss of the certificate presentation. We, we do it at our AGM um, to, 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 uh, to congratulate our members that have made a commitment to, to, to the assessment scheme. But we also do it to sort of prod that, remember that one third that's still waiting for the visit. And they sit and think, well, maybe I should do it. So we make a bit of a song and dance at the AGM. Um, at, at the sort of management op at, at owner level, but we also make a much bigger presentation at the site. And Eric Darlow, he loves a day out, uh, Eric, who's the chair of our panel. And uh, we, we, Eric then goes out and meets the staff and spends a half a day on the site, mooching around and, and making a presentation to the guys that have actually made it happen. And uh, we do make quite a lot of fuss about that. Um, what are some of the more common problems that we've, we've seen coming out of the scheme? I think one of the biggest problems we've, we've, we, we face is, is, is the one of management structure. I think to all you guys in the corporate world, in the big businesses, think, well, that's got to be a bit of a no-brainer. You know, you've got the boss and you do the tree. and It doesn't work like that in, the small, in SMEs. Um, we quite often have the issue of who's the 8-1-C. That can take us weeks to sort out. <laughs> because the owner actually, he wants to be the 8-1-C, but he's actually not there that often. And he's got the other business down the road, and he's actually got a, a, this business and a, that business. He said, well, you're not on the quarry all the time. Why don't you be an 8-1-D, rather, and let your quarry manager be the, oh, no, oh, no, then he's got a higher rank than me. And, no, no, it doesn't work like that. So management structure can be an issue for us. It's, it's, it's one of our, and once we get through that hurdle, we, we generally through most of them. I think one of the other issues, certainly in the last couple of years, has been the cost of the big bill items, um, pr primarily training. Um, you know, to, to, get, to get all your staff trained up to, to meet the, 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 the sort of skills levels which, which I think are required nowadays is, is a big bill. And, um, and, it, and it has been an onerous bill for, for small quarry companies with, with that, that, are, that are barely breaking even at the moment. And, uh, you know, if you can drop that bit of training and, you know, it, 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 it is the first thing that goes. So it has been one of the issues that, that we've, we've faced. Um, this is another old dog, this one. Why? Well, I don't know. It just won't go away. But risk assessments linked to safe systems of work. I think a lot of this comes from some of the, the health and safety practitioners that have been used where, you know, you, you just say to the guys and we say to them, just all you do is do a risk assessment of what's, what are your risks and then back it up with a safe system of work. It works. It's easy to get staff participation. It's easy to do. And, and, and that's one we, we, we kind of winning over slowly with it. But it has been one of our gray areas. 
for some reason, emergency drills and equipment is another nightmare. Nobody has an emergency equipment. And eventually you just tell them all we want is a couple of things that you need when you need them. And uh, once you explain that to them, they're quite happy to do it. And it's normally not a big bill item up. The other issue we've had is, is, is signing up for the next three years. Um, remember, as I said, we rolled it out in 2008. Uh, so we've now got the 2008 guys, 2009 guys coming through for reassessment. And times are tough. Um, it's an extra thousand pounds or four thousand pounds which you might have to lay out and I think that's, that guys are feeling the pinch saying look I've got my systems in place you assessed me a couple of years ago I don't want to do it okay and and, and we are finding that we, we we slowly getting over we have we have we, we we've, we've got a number of our members that are now signing up again for the three years and that ball starting to roll but it has it has been a difficult one to 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 get going um, this is what we, we, we try not to do standardized documents to, to, some, to staff, but we find that for the, for the guys that are not using practitioners, safety practitioners, typically that little quarry with the four guys in it who come in and do the assessment, we, we then go and give them a bit of a helping hand. So we do have, and I'm not going to use the word standard documents, but we give them a helping hand. And this is the kind of typical sort of risk assessment we'll give them. Uh, I stole it from Rory. So if he's here, sorry, Rory. Uh, Rory Graham, but it's, 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 it's quite a nice one where you just get the staff down, list everything that could possibly go wrong while they're doing this bit of work here, score it, and it's a nice simple little scoring scheme, and then once they've got all that, they bang it onto a nice visual risk assessment, which just once again tells him what his risks are, and how he's going to address those risks, he's going to wear his high vis, he's going to have a spoil kit, he's not going to use his mobile phone, and it's pictorial, it's colourful, and you put a picture of him in the bottom corner. And when you put that picture of him in his machine in the bottom corner, you've got big buy-in. I want to let you know, it's a great little safe system of work, that one there. Okay, um, the assessment panel is, is, uh, is, is we're, 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 a, we're a group of, I think it's six, yep. Um, and so we've got Eric Dolo, who's, uh, I think you all know, is our panel chairman. Um, we've got Steve Cole, who's from Raymond Brown uh, Minerals down in the south. And uh, we've got Geraint Morris uh, from Frimstone, he's the south east. Uh, Paul Fothergill from around this part, uh, he's in Derby, from Longcliffe Quarries. Uh, Richard Bird, who's our, our executive officer, and myself as the as an officer and, and, and panel secretary. So, and we sit about twice a year and go through the assessments. We, we, we tend to be sitting a little bit more often nowadays because of the number of, of, of people that are coming through. Um, one of, our, one of our best recruiting sergeants, we believe, is going to be the fee for intervention. It's got to be a bit of a no-brainer if you're in that dirty one-third that's waiting for the visit to actually not get the BAA to come and charge you £850 for, a, for an assessment than have the, the, the man from wherever he comes from to come and charge you over £1,000 for the visit. So uh, we think that, that the, uh, the fee for intervention, while it's a, not a nice thing for us, um, might actually be quite a good recruiting sergeant for, for, the, for the panel. Uh, for the assessment scheme. Um, that's the panel there. I thought you, it's got to have a picture in it. And uh, for you, that's not Geraint Morris. That's John Baxter, um, who's now, who was the, the panel secretary before, but he's now retired. And I must probably will look like that when I go as well. Um, and that's about it. And uh, thanks very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'll happily take some. Thank you, Murray. You can leave the brown envelope at the back. Um, are there any questions for Murray um, on, the on the scheme that uh, they have? Is, um, is the scheme fully compliant with uh, 18,001? Um, probably not. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's, it's, it's one of the things... One of, the, one of the things that, that uh, some of our members are using, they, they, they're, they're using, they're using the, um, uh, the quality and, and, and environmental assessments, um, the 18,000, which is what, 9,000 and uh, 14,000. Um, they're using those, but, and, and then adding on the 18, uh, this instead of 18,001, because they feel it gives them a little bit more uh, quarry regs 1999 grip than, than does 1800. But, that's a bit of a, you know, I would hate to slag off of the, uh, the 18,001, but some of our members believe that this is more rigorous than, than, than 18,001, and it's not necessarily rigorous, but more um, pertinent to, to quarrying issues and, um, and, and re quarry regulations. So that we've got about, I think about three of our members do the 9,000 uh, and 40,000 and then use this instead of 18,000. But whether it's fully converse, I, I, it must probably not. We think it's better. <laughs> Can I ask you a question, please, Monique? Um, 
If there's a change of management at the uh, quarry where you've issued the certificate, do they need to be reassessed within the three years? Uh, when, we, when we put the scheme together, that, that was an issue. And we, we believed that if there was a significant change at the operation, um, then the operation should be reassessed. And the definition of significant change was never honed in. But I think, I think it depends on the, on, on, on the kind of change of management. I think if it was, if, for example, if the company was sold or, or the, the, the person that was in charge was very much um, uh, a very strong character and something came in weaker, perhaps it would be. But it's not something we would, as I say, we would, we would, we would, we would consider it against a significant, whether it was a significant change. Yeah. And hopefully one manager replacing another shouldn't be a significant change at a quarry. Just another one. When you, after your three years, do you go back to a, a blank piece of paper? Or, I know you talk, sort of said, looked at the ambers, yeah. but how do we know that the ambers haven't, uh, we, 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 haven't, we haven't got reds back again, if you know what I mean? I mean, I think as I said in the beginning, the, 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 the assessment is not a bumper to bumper um, audit assessment of the scheme. It's, it's, to give a, it's to give comfort to the operator. Um, the answer is yes, it is a blank piece of paper when, they, when the operator goes in, but knowing that he's, 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 he's got a whole bunch of greens that he's got, he's just probably not going to sit there and ask for, if he knows that the training records were up to scratch the last time round, he's not going to then sit and spend an hour going through the, tra the training records to see if they yet again are still in. He would rather hone in on the ambers and see that they were set. So we would see that the, the three-year period has been part of the continuous improvement process.